Hi, I'm Patrick, and welcome to this week's episode of My Whiskey Den, where we typically review whiskeys from the Midwest, trying to bring them a little more prominence to the rest of the country. But as the year goes on, we're also going to be including some other states where we know people that have access to other great whiskeys that they're doing, because you know what? People love to travel, and if you're going someplace, wouldn't you want to know a distillery that would be worth stopping at and spending some time with some good distillers and tasting some great whiskey. So we're going to be expanding the format a little bit. Not a big deal. And today, we're looking at journeyman distilleries from Three Oaks, Michigan. This one is the Featherbone Bourbon Whiskey. It is batch 29 and bottle 1738. So this it's got a nice tight cork on it as you can see oops synthetic you know that dad, dad likes those don't have to worry about tipping bottles over if you got one of those or even if you do doesn't hurt it either so the cool thing about this uh, is a nice little small distillery but it was set up with a really nice background and a nice story which always kind of enhances the whiskey and this one starts with Bill Wettler, who was, a, I don't want to say a pro golfer, but he was a very prominent golfer at Missouri State College, um, four-year letterman there. After that, he was lucky enough to go over to St. Andrew's Golf Course and work there. Um, and if anyone knows anything about it, that is one of the more prominent golf courses in the world. And I've had friends that have gone there, and it is tremendous. And so I'm, I'm a little jealous in that aspect, and good for him to work his way into a job over across seas. While he was there, though, he met a guy named Greg Ramsey from Tasmania. They became friends, and believe it or not, you know, in Scotland, they ended up developing a nice love of scotch that was there, and, and whiskey in general. But I was going to say probably scotch because you're right in right in the heart of all the excitement some right there um so ooh, that's really nice sorry i couldn't help but sniff it i need to break up a little bit of a uh, little bit of the reading bill ends up traveling over to tasmania to see a different golf course a couple years later and then actually goes over to mr R to greg ramsey's distillery that he started there takes a look around really kind of likes it Gets kind of a, even a little more interested look at it. Goes back home, works for the family business a bit. Then a few years later, he goes back over to the Tasmania, travels to some of the other distilleries that are there, starts kind of developing a real feel and excitement for it. So when he comes home, Bill and Chuck, I was going to say Wetler, brothers, relatives, somewhere in that, in that line of things, they team up and buy what the middle section was, of the old Featherbone Distillery. Um, the Featherbone Distillery in the 1800s, early 1900s, they came up with, uh, they made whips, and they also started uh, using feather bones instead of whale bones in women's corsets, which at the time revolutionized the industry. Three Oaks at that point becomes a big name. Everyone knows it all over the place, mainly because of, it helps women. I was going to say, I, I wouldn't want it's a completely stiff whalebone going through a corset. I, I never wore a corset, but from what I hear, it can be uncomfortable, to say the least, from time to time, though, though they do look nice. So the feather bone is a little more flex and brings real names to it. So they buy what was left over of the middle section of that distillery to create journeyman, or sorry, of the manufacturing plant, so they can create journeyman distillery which is what we're drinking now and why this one is named Featherbone. It's named after the most pom prominent product that was produced there. Um, really, really kind of neat in that aspect. Now, this one is a um, single distillation. It's 70% organic corn, 25% organic wheat, and 5% organic rye. It's 45 proof, um, and the neat, they are really neat because they are organic and I believe they're also kosher as well they they have uh, a rabbi come in go over everything so 
If you're Jewish and you're questioning it, you can pick this up and you don't have to feel guilty whatsoever. Um, th I thought that was pretty cool because you don't, rarely do you see a kosher distillery and then that, that I, I, I like differences. I like changes. It's another little niche in the belt of things. So, and being craft, we like everything being organic. It gives it a little bit more flavor punch most of the time. So, it's kind of a nice little background. Now we're going to kind of jump into the whiskey here and see what this thing's got. We have, I have heard some wonderful things about a couple of the other releases that they have. I just have a hard time finding them here in uh, in Green Bay, Wisconsin. So shout out Alloway Liquor for having this. Um, I got paid for that, just a nice plug because it's hard to find some stuff from Michigan. And I was happy to find this one there uh, when I stopped in. So thank you for that. It's it's nice to get a little bit outside the realm every now and then. So, hmm, it's very pleasant on the nose. It smells light. There's a very light um, green note to it in there. I was gonna say it was very light, so not very heavy. Where some of the other ones can be pretty heavy on that. A little bit of alcohol flavor, but I'm also getting um, like a little, like a bit of a nut smell in there, and like a a green vegetal note, kind of like a kind of like a little bit of a hay, a little bit of a hay note, uh, it's a little dusty. Not bad or overpowering, because sometimes you can have like a, a vegetal note that will like jump over everything um, and kind of dominate the glass this this is this is all this is nice though yeah a little bit of an a little bit of an earthy like a dirty dusty note in there um, a little light caramel but yeah not not overpowering in any way shape or form so I was gonna say even like I said, even with that little bit of a light green barrel note, it's it's not uh, doesn't smell bad at this point. Hopefully, it doesn't stick around too much in the flavor. Okay, it's not very oily. I can say it's it's very cl it tastes clean. You know, it also went away pretty quick. So it is, it's not, oh, and that's in contradiction to what I'm, what I'm seeing here as I'm spinning it around and letting it sit at the top part of my glass. I do have some nice legs and a little edge rim, but it doesn't, it doesn't taste that way. It finishes pretty quick. Uh, makes you want to go back to have another one to kind of sit around. We want to come back to another drinker again. So we'll do that. Okay, little light, light green wood note, but the rye mixes in with that well to hide that nicely. So that's not very overpowering or anything. Um, little, al little alcohol bite, but not, not a lot enough to know that you're drinking whiskey. I like that. I do like that in whiskey when you can, you taste, you know, you feel like you're drinking it rather than having it be completely covered over and it feeling like a almost like a candied drink when you're getting like a liqueur flavor. I almost like to know that you're you're drinking a whiskey when you're doing it. And you do that with this. It's got a, let's see here. It does have a little bit of a nutty flavor in there, just like in the nose. Um, Wow, I'm having a hard time pegging that. It's not really a walnut for me. It's not like a praline or anything. We've had some other other different wood uh, uh, notes like that recently with some nuts. Um, hmm. I'm going to go almost like a peanut. Just like a flat, dried peanut. Not the salted ones, not the candied ones. But just like a normal plain peanut I'm getting a, I'm getting that in there in the mid-range um, a 
an okay amount of rye spice, like enough to kind of cover that uh, little green, light green note up. You're not getting a bunch of hay, like you, like I was on the nose more so. That's a pleasant thing. I was gonna say I don't mind it on the nose, but I was gonna say taste, kind of that hay hay note isn't always my favorite. So I'm glad that kind of faded away in there. Obviously, kind of the sweet, sweet kind of cereal notes from the um, from the corn. Those are in there right away. Um, this is pretty interesting. I'm, I'm okay with this, and I and I like it better. Um, first time I had it, when I I was gonna say I think a little bit more of that green hay note and stuff was in there right away when I first tasted it. I we drank a few drinks, let it sit for a couple weeks. Uh, I'm really enjoying it a lot more this time coming back to it than kind of the first drink or two on it. Um, yeah, this is this is not bad. Um, I was gonna say I know they on some of the tasting notes, other people they said it was bold and assertive. I maybe assertive, like a little bit. Like I said, you get the alcohol thing. Um, it has it has flavors in it, but I'm not gonna say I'm like overly bold where they're like, "Whoo, this is." The dominant force on the inside. Yeah, I think I think when they and a couple other people use the word assertive, you, you do you do feel like you're drinking whiskey. It does fade. Like I said, it, it's a very clean whiskey. It fades pretty well. Um, now I've had a few drinks. Obviously, it's sticking around a little bit longer on the back of my tongue a little slight burn on the sides um, but this this is not bad it's it's not a hundred percent up my up my alley I don't mind it it's it's nice though it's it's something I, I would never turn this down and because of the pro profile of what's on the inside of this I'm actually kind of excited about a couple of the other things that I heard about I know they had a rye I think they had like a four crosses one where it was like a four grain which I've heard wonderful things about. Um, so it's kind of like an entry into it. I'd say, you know, definitely worth picking up a bottle. Maybe let it breathe, you know, get, get a get a couple of drinks, let it sit down. I, I am that way with a lot of whiskeys because a lot of times it does tame them and just change it a, a little bit where that first neck pour is a little, a little different. Um, it really helped this one out quite a bit. Hmm. As I swish it, it's got a little bit more of that dusty hay note and the and a light caramel note come in on like the first half, where I was a little bit more focused on the cleanness. But yeah, as you say, you do get a little bit of light hay, a little bit of light dust, and a light caramel in the front half. Rolls into the rye, the rye fades away nice, um, and it's and it's a very clean drink. As you can see, I've I've gone back quite a bit here already. So um, this is Journeyman Distillery's Featherbone. Very nice whiskey, pretty pleasant. Um, upcoming in the next uh, couple days here, we are gonna go to another Monday night stream. We just did one the other day uh, where it was movie night. We're gonna go to this coming Monday right after the NFC AFC Championship games because we don't wanna we don't wanna fight with them. I mean, they are ruin they're not ruining Sunday Fun Day. They're just changing Sunday Fun Day. So this coming Monday, we are gonna jump over to. High Wire Distilling, New Southern Revival. It's a 100% Jimmy Red Corn Bourbon. And we are going to do a comparison between their normal release and their cask strength single barrel release. And the difference is the normal one is 47.5%. The single barrel is 55.3%. So a high jump up. I was looking at them earlier today. I got a couple samples. Um, from another one on the channel from Mike Lissick and here they are problem when I first saw this is this is a brown bottle This threw me off for a second. I thought automatically right away. Holy cow. Look at the difference. No, it's a brown bottle um, That was a bit of a fib. Nice try Mike. That was a good tease. You got me on that one I wasn't prepared for that. I was thought it was, thought it might have been the greatest transition between cast strength I had ever seen um, but 
that was not the case, but I am looking forward to, to reviewing those with Mike and Ben during the live stream. Stop in then, see what you think of them. Might be a bottle you want to pick up. But uh, remember, from my den to yours, it's not the size of the den that matters. It's the love of the whiskey. Cheers, folks. Hey!